I used to be a racing pigeon, but I was tempted by London's free peanuts and fast women. Some people think there's too many of us, but London's only got three million pigeons. I have relatives in every major city, from Stockholm to Sydney, but you can't beat Trafalgar Square. Such luxurious lavatory shower units. We get all sorts here. Is this guy a fat or what? I'm wearing a mask because in any hazardous situation, any employee these days is expected to protect himself against potential harm. And here, in Trafalgar Square, there is potential harm caused by the pigeons. Harm? I think he must mean charm. A pigeon eats about 60 grams of food a day, but it's a, not a very efficient digester, and so a lot of it goes straight through. And an individual bird can produce about 20 grams of droppings each day. Now, in a place like Trafalgar Square here, where you may have a thousand pigeons, that's 20 kilos of droppings. Now, the droppings are messy, they look unsightly, they can be slippery, people can fall on them, and they can also contain a number of disease organisms. Children that are running around chasing them, falling in the droppings, getting the droppings on the hands and then eating something, they are certainly at a potential risk. And because of this, a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to clear up the droppings. And here, Westminster City Council spends over £50,000 a year giving the square a daily wash in order that people are protected from these hazards. So if it wasn't for us, this bloke might not have a job? Let me tell you, we pigeons are survivors. We've had to be. We were the first victims of factory farming. This is a dovecote built about 1700. It was used for housing pigeons for the table. And the construction allowed 350 nesting holes. So that would give you probably during a winter up to 1200 pigeons for the table. Dovecots fell into disuse when other sources of winter meat became uh, uh, available. The pigeons will have gone where there is food, and many of them, of course, end up in cities. And as these pigeons are descended from rock doves, in many ways, the buildings that they now live on are similar to their natural habitat, which is in cliff faces and rocks. Liberty. Free food and lodging and nothing and no one to eat us. No wonder we thrived. And some people actually love us, so my day often starts with a bit of park life. I get up when I want, except on Wednesdays when I get rudely awakened by the dustman. I put my trousers on, have a cup of tea, and I think about leaving the house. I feed the pigeons, I sometimes feed the sparrows too. It gives me a sense of enormous well-being. And then I'm happy for the rest of the day. Safe in the knowledge there will always be a bit of my heart devoted to it. But we don't inspire a sense of well-being in everyone. The problem with the blind, and obviously they're making a mess. We don't have the blind out. They'd be doing it all on the meat, and I'd be in like public health would be giving me lots of problems because it's only a plastic blind. The acid in the pool will make the holes, and the more you have the blind scrubbed and get it cleaned, you know, within another month or so, you'll back to the same square one again, you know. Would you sell pigeon in the shop? <laughs> I would no way sell pigeon in the shop. I'm fed up looking at them when I sell them. The people stand by the window and get droppings. Children are taken to the park, which it can't be very healthy. And all day long there are people feeding them in spite of a notice that's just been scratched off, which our council choose not to renew. The residents don't like the pigeons, but we have a religious group that think they're very important. I think they're supposed to be the souls of their departed. So they come along with huge dustbin sacks full of bread. So we are now inundated with them. In this amount they are vermin. Vermin? That's very nice. I think our chief concerns regarding pigeons are first uh, the mess 
that they leave, and secondly, of course, the health problems that are associated with that mess. And indeed, in Trafalgar Square, which is not under our control, the person who is licensed to sell food to the pigeons is licensed by the government. Tell it like it is, Julie. It is somewhere we would not wish to have any restrictions because it has a tradition about it. But unless there is a voluntary restraint, unless our publicity um, works and people do stop feeding the pigeons, inevitably I think tougher action will need to be taken. And we may have to say we will unfortunately prosecute you. You can say what you like, mate. Lynn and Maggie won't let us down. racing birds. A lot of them come from Yorkshire. <laughs> Most of them are disabled in some way and unfortunately when that happens the owners very rarely want them back. So we, we keep them, we can't release them. They bred them and then they, they don't want the responsibility for them when they're no longer useful to them, which we feel is a callous attitude. But um, I'm afraid we meet it an awful lot. We usually deal with well over a thousand a year. And that's just because people do care. So they do have lots of friends, lots of people who are incredibly fond of them. And, and pigeons, pigeons relate to people, oh, they don't do. they? They, yeah. they don't, they're not just scared or, you know, you see them from a distance like a lot of wild birds. They, they actually relate to people. I mean, you can, you know, feed them by hand. They get to know you. They really do get very fond of you. There's a sort of relationship, but not the sort of relationship you find with, say, pets. They're, they still retain a sort of wild element, but they choose to be with us. Well, we're vegans and we wanted to extend our commitment to helping animals and relieving suffering in, in a more positive way, not just giving up products that are involved in cruelty, but actually helping, physically helping a creature. And, um, we chose pigeons because they're so numerous in the town and because they eat corn and vegetarian food. They, they have a very hard life. They're my kind of people. Such exquisite taste. Now, being a kept man is okay for some, but the fancy life is not for me. The magic of keeping homey beans is the relaxation part of it. Being able to come out here and feed them and they'll, they're quite happy to come to you, walk around you, fly down, sit with you. They'll, they're quite happy to sit around when I'm on the patio, just sit around the floor, get up and they'll go for a fly and they'll just come back. And uh, they're watching you all the time down there. So it's a, it's a great form of relaxation for me. They're not a dirty bird, they clean themselves regularly. Um, there's no problem with disease from these pigeons other than the uh, droppings they get dry. But if you clean your loft out regularly, you don't have any problem with that. My father used to keep them some years ago, and it's in the blood. Um, it's very strange for a lot of people, they can't understand why I keep pigeons, but as you say, if you keep pigeons in a, a loft and you keep them clean, they're, they're like any other bird. I chose freedom. Year, I go to Tilbury Grain Terminal for my holidays. Fresh air, sea views, a great social life, and as much grub as you can eat. They shift thousands of tons each week, spill loads of it, and then they moan when we clear it up for them. Absolute pest. They're, and they're 
ever so dangerous because the simple reason is you're climbing up and down the ladders at night when it's dark and you disturb them and they suddenly fly at you. And if it's in a narrow place where you can't get out of the way, they just, they just they'll fly right into you. Before the plant starts up in the morning, they're just sitting somewhere and then suddenly the belt starts up and they get caught in the belt and then obviously they go up the elevators or whatever and they get caught in the valves then all the plant stops and everybody's running around trying to find out why and it's some silly little pigeon that stops all the plant. They certainly don't really want them on grain being food stuffs, yeah. although it is washed. So I think we'd like to know more about um, what's in their droppings as well, really. Yeah. Does it do any harm to us, you know? What's it, what happens if it gets on your skin? Some of my mates have gone missing lately. I wonder if it's anything to do with that white van. Hang on a minute. I know that bloke. There's quite a few different methods of uh, deterring pigeons on buildings. That's, uh, that's one system, a bird chain system that we use. We favour that one more so than the other systems that are out because it's uh, you can go anywhere, move, move around. So we've got all the buildings, you can get it round there. It's, uh, Polyphon based with uh, stainless steel spikes and it just deters the pigeons from sitting on them. They don't like anything touching them. So that's your game. Anything else I should know about? And the other system we've got is uh, the good old bird repellent, which isn't used so much in these days. This is a rubber system here. This is a, a trip wire with stainless steel stems, which you can do at honey lengths. And when it's the bird, it, the, the tension is taken up two springs each end and the bird comes, no harm to the bird whatsoever, and he just bounces up, and we just hardly notice it will sit to the eye, to the human eye, from the ground, which is also a good deterrent. So you come on to your fourth option, a good old netting. This comes in nylon or polythene. It's strung down buildings or across light wells with straining wires, and that stops the pigeons from roosting and nesting and causing problems. Every day is a challenge. Every day is different. What we enjoy. Our other solutions of dealing with pigeons are the pigeon trap. Uh, it can house anything up to about 120 pigeons, simply by the pigeons filtering through the funnels on either end. Uh, a record for us for one of these would be about 140 pigeons. Stay out, mate! The rumour is that they're old duckers, dead duckers. <laughs> the ones around here, anyway. So no, we're quite attached to them, really. <laughs> They're part of the place, really. They are part of the terminal. I think if they go, it'll be like the Tower of London, I think. It'll fall down. <laughs> we're hoping to come back as pigeons, aren't we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, at least I'll get a grub. <laughs> yeah. It'll be uh, shitting on everyone else. <laughs> Language. <laughs> Fancier you are! If you keep pigeons, you grow to understand pigeons, and also you respect pigeons. So, when you're doing the job, you know it's been done in a professional and humane method. Uh, so that's definitely the advantages in uh, being a pigeon fancier, shall we say. And a nice multicoloured feral pigeon. Nice cross, nice colours, nice to see in the park, but the diseases this will carry, you'll be quite surprised for the droppings, also the insects that live on the feathers of the pigeon, that can give you a skin reaction, also they carry quite a few diseases, avian tuberculosis, salmonella, any cases for the droppings so in a lot of respects you could say that they are flying rats flying rats you cheeky so-and-so I mean, we try to keep clean all these pigeons 
pigeons in here suffer from a pigeon virus, which is peculiar to pigeons. It's called paramyxo and it affects the nervous system. You can see one or two of them have trouble coordinating. So they have to be kept separately. Also, of course, other pigeons can catch it. It takes about six weeks before they're not contagious anymore. It takes several months to get them completely right. Well, I can't go on holiday anymore, which is, which is a shame, because we do love to get into the country and stay in the high cottage for a week. We, that was lovely, but there's so many now that we just couldn't leave them. You know, it's not a question of just leaving piles of food around. And also, we, we do get so many calls that we'd feel we'd be letting them down too much. And, especially in the sort of season when you go away, there's so many babies. And often it's a question, if we don't come now, they'll be killed. It's incredibly hard work, isn't it? It is. It is very hard. And in July, we get about 200, most of which babies, a month. That means feeding three times a day. You know, you're up at about one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning sometimes, and you just feel like hell can't. That's it. We're not allowed to be a charity, which is disgusting because of the work we do. We, we shouldn't have charitable status, but because of this, this bigoted attitude that, that pigeons are vermin, we were denied it. That's discrimination, isn't it? Against pigeons. Well, yeah. it's us as well. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I wanted my children to be born in hospital. National health, of course. They're so quiet these days. Well, the general public think of the pigeon as the street pigeon. They see it on the street and see it in all its tameness coming to the food that they put down for it. But here, we're in Pigeon City, the disused wing of a hospital where a few windows have been left open, and this is where the pigeons breed. This is where we see the other side of their life, the sex, the violence, and the squalor. of droppings and this provides a perfect medium for the growth of a number of fungi and one of these is aspergillus whose spores in an enclosed space can cause aspergillosis in man. There is a waxy dust comes off the feathers of the birds and that can cause pigeon fancier's lung in people who are allergic to it. And in addition, there is the, the pigeon equivalent of the disease psittacosis, ornithosis, which can also produce very severe lung problems in man. If you look around a place like this generally, you get a number of pictures of their success. For example, you could come into a place like this at almost any time of year, and you're likely to find some eggs and some chicks. Some of the birds can breed throughout the year. They lay two eggs. They are prolific producers of chicks. And the adults can produce four or five broods in a year. And the chicks mature at a very young age. And some of them can breed when six months old. So you get the impression of tremendous productivity in a place like this. But you also get the impression of the downside. Because a lot of the chicks don't survive. They may contract diseases. Uh, they're more likely to die of starvation. And that's why we see dead birds everywhere. And of course, the dead birds are rapidly decayed by all sorts of uh, insect life, beetles and mites. Don't come up here. The eggs have just hatched. Come. 
Don't we have any privacy? Well, now this really is pigeon paradise. It's a huge, dark attic in the top of a tall building, and there are odd gaps in the roof where pigeons can get in. And here we've got a, a nest with two chicks that have just recently hatched. And uh, at the moment, they are being fed by their parents on pigeon milk. Pigeon milk is made in the crop of the bird. The crop is essentially a storage organ so that the pigeon can have a good feed first thing in the morning and then can sit around and digest the food that's it's eaten over the next few hours. But the crop has this dual function during the breeding season in that cells become detached from the outer wall and these cells then constitute what we call pigeon milk, which is an incredibly rich substance. Uh, it's about 60% protein, about 40% fat, and it contains a few minerals as well. But the protein and fat are what the chicks really need to survive and grow. Here we have two much larger chicks. These are probably two and a half to three weeks old. You can see that they're very different in coloration and obviously contain genes relating them to fantail pigeons, the white pet pigeons. Uh, so obviously some domestic pigeon blood has got into these feral birds. The other thing to notice is that the nest contains very large quantities of droppings here. Obviously this nest has been used many, many times before, probably by the same parents. The birds themselves have their own fauna uh, in the form of biting mites, lice and fleas. And this is where we have one of the problems for human beings working down below. Because when these pigeons leave the nest, these biting insects will have nothing to feed on. And it's then that they can migrate down and attack people down below, causing certainly unpleasantness and sometimes illness. Now these pigeons in the nest here are in about a week's time going to fledge and then they will fly off and join their parents and join the flocks of street pigeons, another successful brood. If you're a pigeon, no place is sacred. This is a Webley Vulcan 0.22 air rifle. We're here to shoot the pigeons that are coming into roost and we have to, from time to time, cull them to reduce the numbers. It's difficult to completely proof a building of this nature and culling is the only solution. No wonder he doesn't want to show his face. try to do it as humanely and as efficiently as possible with the minimum of suffering. If the pigeon was rat-like, people wouldn't worry about it. But because they're such a lovely bird and an intelligent bird, it's a very emotive subject. panacea for pigeon problem. People are confused between total preservation of animal and bird life and conservation of animal and bird life. Well-managed conservation is what we must achieve, but total preservation doesn't do either man or the animal or bird life any good at all. Wise words, except when it's you they're talking about. Well, we wanted to, to dedicate ourselves to something meaningful that we, we feel is important. And it's pigeons, and <laughs> that's how it'll always be. As long as we can, we will. We don't want to ever say no to a pigeon in need. The key problem is food. The number of pigeons present in any given area is determined by the amount of food that's available to them. 
So if you want to reduce the number of pigeons, you've got to reduce the amount of food. And there are two principal sources of food. Some comes from people who like to feed pigeons. And therefore, if you're going to reduce the amount of food, you've got to try and persuade people to drop less food for them. And the other is the general waste and untidiness in cities. And to reduce that sort of food, you need a campaign to clean up the cities. The view on pest control is somewhat mixed. Killing pigeons doesn't really achieve a great deal. And a lot of the public would like a pill to be developed, a contraceptive pill for pigeons. What? There are chemicals available, but in fact the way that these chemicals operate is very inhumane at the moment. And we don't have a satisfactory chemical that will do this job for us. Next they'll be supplying us condoms, or suggesting they eat us. Of course we can eat pigeons. It was eating pigeons that first brought pigeons into contact with man. They are delicious. I used to go out shooting with my father, who was a vicar, and my mother was a terrific cook. And my childhood memories are always large saucepans full of game simmering away. People are rather horrified by game, game pie. These days, they're much more sort of protective of the animals. I just do a tiny slit here. And then just take in two fingers and pull out the middle. Uh, I don't think I'll be staying for dinner. Under the pea. Under the pea.